there it lies. Its huge branches full of beautiful brown cones are now twisted and bent under its large trunk. There's cones everywhere. It's like a giant female whose arms are violently tied behind her back before she was pushed over. She cried when she fell. I heard her silent scream. It's lit the frozen air and I heard its echo for months. And I still do if I think about it. While falling, she still tried to save herself by grabbing her woody fingers tied around the cloud's edge, but missed it. And with an agonizing cry, she crashed down. She, who just a second ago reached the sky. She, who had stood on her place almost a hundred years. She, who offered her branches to the birds to nest and for me to stay dry when it rained heavily. They said she had become dangerous. Her trunk was too old and rotten. Next storm could make it fall down, and if that would happen, there would be a lot of damage around. She was so big, there had to be a special timberman to lock it down. When his job was done, he came to check the stump and said he had never seen a hundred years old fur in such a good shape. She wasn't rotten. She was healthy, but grew in the wrong place, in the middle of our front yard. My fur. I was angry. I was bitter. I cried. Next morning was freezing cold. Her fragrance hung heavy in the air. I wrote her story to remember the spirit of her, and I found the rest of the trees. Now there are spirits everywhere, and I'm felting more. We, human beings, have always found consolation from the forests, and we have had our special and holy trees. Now, in the middle of the corona times, we need them more than ever, as a companion, and as a someone to talk to, even only as a reason to go out and get some fresh and healing air.